Yo, what's good, everybody? This is C Hendo back again on Always Working. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Now, today, first off, this dude here, man, when it comes to style grace, this dude has it, man. Like, y'all see the heat, y'all see the kicks. We're going to talk about that. But this man does everything. He knows sports, he knows about the fashion life, the music, of course, you already know. He's part of the JBP Entrepreneur Mall. What's up, Ma? Yo, what's going on, family? Man, man, bless, 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 man. How's quarantine life been? Quarantine? Um, I low key feel like I've been quarantined for the last three years, man. I don't really go nowhere. I don't, I don't be doing much, man. Like I, I'm a homebody. I like to hang out at the crib, you know, with my friends and stuff like that, or just do like little dinner. I do miss the dinners, like being able to just go to different uh, restaurants and and have good dinners and and kick it, you know, have good conversations. Uh, I miss traveling. You know, what I mean, that's 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 one of the things that I love doing. I love being able to just get on a flight and, and travel whenever I can. So that part of it is probably what I miss the most, being able to just dine at night and um and travel. But as far as being home, I, I'm always home anyway. So that was that wasn't a big thing for me. So have you picked up any like new hobbies or anything like I've been reading books and stuff? Have you picked up anything new like hobbies wise? Uh. Uh, no, I actually I started working out more. I I, I I I transferred my diet. I'm completely vegan now. Um, oh wow! Uh, yeah, so that that's that's pretty much been it, man. Just worked on my worked on my physical health and my and my mental health a lot. That's about it. So, what's your go to vegan dish? You said what made me do it? Oh, what's your what's your go to dish? Like, do you have a go to meal for your? For your vegan meal, do you have a go-to? I have this. Uh, I have this chef, man, Chef Don. He, uh, he, 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 he pretty much does all my food, meal preps me for the week. Uh, he tries to emulate a lot of my favorite dishes, just using uh, all plant-based. Uh, he's a, he's a beast, man. He's been, he's been a, he's been a life, a life-saving uh, godsend for me, man. Like I should have been, I feel like I should have been doing this years ago. Man, that's dope, man. That's dope. So, man, about nine years ago, it was a video. And it was do the regular guys still have a shot? Now that it's 2020, anything changed from that? I'm a prophet, man. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's gotten worse. <laughs> it's actually worse now, man. It's like, you know, the regular nine to five guy. And it's some great nine to five guys, man. Like I, you know, I know a lot of them, and it's but it's unfortunately, man, if you if you can't provide a certain uh ambiance, let's just say ambiance, if you can't provide a certain ambiance or a certain uh you know, lifestyle, you, 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 the bottom of the barrel, man. It's just, it's, it's, it's messed up, but that's just, it is what it is, man. That's dope. That's dope. So obviously, man, let's talk kicks and man, watching JBP, I get jealous, man, because you got all the, all the sneakers. Like, yeah. What is your favorite shoe? What's your favorite shoe in your collection? Uh, my favorite shoe, uh, Probably the Rockefeller Air Force One. Okay. Yeah, probably the Rockefeller okay. Air Just because of what it represents, uh, you know, seeing uh, something that my, my brother's built over the years, actually being on a classic sneaker from being from New York. The uh, all-white Air Force One was like a staple being from New York. So to see that logo on the side of a, a, a staple of New York, a Nike signature shoe, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it represents a lot. You know what I mean? It just represents uh, hard work, hustle, determination, years of just not taking no for an answer. And, you know, just it also shows that our culture is very, you know, there's no limits to what we can do in our culture. Man, that's dope. Now, with the re-release of that shoe, what did you think, man? Because, like, the hype around that shoe was big for the re-release. Like, I tried to get on sneakers after and copy pair, and it was like, nah, not today, buddy. Hit stock. What did you think about the re-release? Yeah. Um, it was dope, man. Because again, when you know when they first did that, when they first did it, it was years ago, and it was like very limited. It was like only the crew had it. So to see, you know, what my brother was able to do with them and actually re-release it, it was you know seeing the line at House of Hoops down the block was like, you know, it was just a testament to just how much of an impact that they've had on the culture. Man, so if if you had a one-on-one, 
let's say if you had a player exclusive for yourself, a one-on-one, so like Fat Joe has a one-on-one, certain guys have one-on-ones, I believe, like DJ Clark Kent. If you have a one-on-one, what shoe would it be? What model, what silhouette? Like if I had to design my own sneaker, like it was my shoe? Well, let's just say if you had a chance to get your own player exclusive, like if you had your own Air Force One, or if you had your own Air Max 95, if you had your own Jordan One, if you could pick a shoe that's already made and they did a distinct colorway for you and maybe put your own logo on there or anything, what shoe would it be? Ooh. Uh, hmm. I think the Jordan One is an obvious answer, so I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh. Let's do the Concord. I'll take the Concord. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll I think that'd be dope. To me, that's the that's the uh to me the Concord is probably the greatest shoe ever made. Okay. Oh, uh, I you know what I, I would say the Jordan one, but I wouldn't disagree because I think the Concord sort of changed when in 95, 96, when that shoe sort of came around, that sort of changed everything. How we looked at shoes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love on the shoes is crazy. So right. But obviously, I know you watched The Last Dance, and then that translates over to sneakers because now you go on stock, go different apps, the resale prices are crazy. What are your thoughts on that? Because I remember you can get certain shoes in the outlet. Now, everything's on resale price. What do you think about that? As far as like the resale game? Yeah, like with the joy, obviously, with the documentary, it sort of changed things because it sort of put a price spike on them because like i remember being able to get certain jordan ones that were hitting outlets or yeah now it's a big deal um again this it, it's it's part of the culture man being able to you know take something and resell it flip it uh that's actually a, a it's you know it's a lifestyle the, re, the resale game um i just only i, I don't like it because it's kind of like you know I, I think nike should just make them more available you know what I mean? Like, just make them more available uh, because you got people that don't even really care about the shoe. You know what I mean? They yeah. just want to get in and make a couple of dollars off of it. Uh, so, I mean, I understand it. I get it. And I, I respect it to an extent. But it's like sometimes I'm like, man, I don't want to have to go. I just want to be able to get this shoe and that's it, man. I don't want to have to do no raffles. I don't want to mm. have to go to different sites and try to get a pair and, and pay more. It's like, you know, sometimes you have to if you want the shoe that bad, like you're you're, you're willing to pay the resale price. But yeah. at the end of the day, man, I just get kind of fed up with it because I'm like, I just want the shoe. Man. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to go through all of these loops and, <laughs> and 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 turns just to get a sneaker. Like, that's the only thing I don't like about it. Yeah, and I agree with you because like it's it's crazy. Like, I remember there was a time I could go in and get a pair of Jordan ones or a certain shoe, mm -hmm. and it'd be fine. Now it's just it's everywhere. A funny so, story. I remember when the uh, when the uh, what shoe was that? The Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. I remember when that first released. Uh, I was I may have been maybe twelve when it first came out, thirteen maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was at the sneaker store. With my mom. I didn't even know what it was. Like the dude that worked there, he was like, "Yeah, this is the uh, you know, it's the newest Jordan or whatever." And uh, I remember it came with the D Brown poster when the D Brown covered his covered his face in the dunk contest. It came with that poster, um, and I have I took those sneakers. I didn't even know what it was, but that night or the next night, I believe it was the Super Bowl, and I think that's when the commercial premiered for the Hair Jordan and the Air Jordan. And wow. that's how I knew that that was like the new sneaker. And I called, my, I remember calling my homeboy like, "Yo, I got that sneaker." And he was like, yeah, right. Like, you don't got it. I'm like, yo, my mom bought it for me yesterday. <laughs> and that was Super Bowl Sunday. And that Tuesday, I went to school with that sneaker. I was the first person in my neighborhood, in my school with that sneaker. See, I hear that. Bordeaux 7, man. That is that is a legendary I remember shoe. that. I distinctly, I distinctly remember that. Like, And even my mom remembered. I, I reminded her about that like two years ago. And she was like, yeah, she remembered that. Dang, that's crazy. All right, so I got to ask you, is there any particular shoe that you don't have right now that you would want to have in your collection? Hmm. Any particular shoe that I want right now that I don't have? Oh, the Tiffany Dunks. 
Yeah, the highs or lows? Down. The lows. The lows. Yeah, I want I want the Tiffany Dunks. Uh, yeah, that's the one. The Tiffany Dunks and the original Jordan one, the original colorway. I had those and okay. I lost them. I lo- I don't don't ask me where they went. It's, I, it hurts my heart. I had them, and I, I think I may have left them in a hotel. Didn't check the closet or something before I left, like that type of thing. Man, so all my plugs out there, y'all hear the man. That's what we looking for. All right, yeah. so, man, obviously you're, you're a huge NBA supporter. Um, you watch a lot of NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about what's going on right now in Orlando with this bubble? Um, I think it's it's interesting, man. You know, it's it's. I think that in a weird way, the the, the players are forced to focus more on just basketball now. So I think you're going to see a lot of guys locked in. Um, a lot of players don't have to worry about getting tickets for the games, for family and friends. Um, you know, it's literally like they're in, they're on a, on, a, on a campus and, you know, all they have is their playbook in their room and, and game film and to really lock in and play basketball. I remember uh, at first I was, uh, was kind of saying like this, whoever wins this ring, I don't know if it will be respected amongst the other rings hmm. because of, you know, everything that went on with the stoppage of the season and then some players opting out not to return. And then, uh, you know, the, 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 the way they do, they're doing the seeding with the playoffs and all of that, you know, it's, yeah. I kind of had my, my, my skepticism about it, but the more I sit down and think about it, this is, this is, I think this is going to be a difficult ring to win. Got you. Gotcha. So I kind of, I kind of got to put some, I got to, I, I, I got to put more respect on it than I originally thought I would. Hmm. So with, so with the, with the bubble actually going on, and when you look at the team like Lakers, I believe you are a Lakers supporter, right? If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm a Lakers fan. Yes. Okay, so your Lakers fan. So, do you feel like this is an advantage for the Lakers because with LeBron James, obviously, being at his age, this gives him rest. And Davis, who's going to have injuries, helps him out as well. What do you think about that? As far as the Lakers, their chances. Yeah, I like the Lakers' chances, man. I think they'll be right there. I think they'll be one of the last four teams. Um. I just don't. I mean, I'm a diehard Lakers fan. I love LeBron for for for, for some weird pe- some some weird reason. People think I don't like LeBron. It's because I don't think he's better than than Michael Jordan. So they think that I don't like him. It's, it's just stupid. But whatever. Um, but I don't know, man. That 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 Clippers team to me, healthy is just. I think they just have a little more. I think they have a little more top to bottom. You know what I mean? Like okay. I think they just have a little more top to bottom. Uh, yeah, I I just don't. I, I love the Lakers' chances. They have a really great chance at it. I, I know that, uh, you know, AD and LeBron. I mean, it's I would never bet against them. That would be stupid. But yeah. I just I just feel like with Kawhi and Paul George and Lou Will and uh, Pat oh, Bev and you know all of those pieces over there, man. It's Montrez Harrell, uh, Zubac. That's his name. The big fella in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, Zubox, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now they got Joaquin Noah. Guys that just want to come in and play their role. Marquis, uh, the Morris twin, Marcus Morris. I love his guy. I think he's, I think he's very underrated. I think when he's locked in and focused, he's one of the better offensive forwards in the league. Um, man. So, yeah, man, I just I just think they have – it's just it's – just, it's just too – they got a lot of pieces over there with the Clippers, man. Okay. So, is there a particular player that you like watching, like a go-to guy? Right now, currently, yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite players to watch, uh, obviously James. Okay. Uh, I love Lou Will game. Lou Will is just yeah. he he, his game is so smooth, man. He he looked like he just yeah. in the park. Uh, yep. Jamal Crawford, still one of my favorite players to watch. Um, 
Russell Westbrook, he just I feel like he doesn't take a playoff. I feel he plays hard every minute he's on the floor. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie, you know what I mean? Like I it's it's a few guys, man. I just I cause I would I just I love the way they play the game. They look like they're having fun playing the game. Okay. Well, I'm glad you mentioned those guys. So I'm gonna name a few players and I need your opinion on them. All right, okay. so the first player so the first player that comes to mind is Luka Doncic. It's 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 man. Luca is he's one of my favorite players to watch too, just because I, I watching Luca, I get the feeling that he didn't think that the NBA game was gonna be this easy for him. Okay. Like I think I think he plays with this look on his face like this is it. Like like I can do this like really well. You know what I mean? And I and you can kind of see that in his face, like he's on a uh if he keeps this up, I think he'll be league MVP in three years. Yeah. Like if he, if he keeps playing like if he keeps playing like this, like I this is and he's only what, 20, 21? He just turned twenty one. Yeah, man, that's dangerous. I Luca is he's special, man. He's he's gonna be, you know, after Braun bows out, I, it, it might be Luca's league. Ooh. Yeah, man, yeah. He, he's a phenom. He's a phenom. All right. Yeah. So another phenom, Zion Wilson. I like him. I need to see. I need to see. I need to see more though. I need to see. Well, we only saw twenty games, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I need to see more. I need. To, I like him though. I, I I think that um, once he really learns how to play basketball and he uh he takes his body, he treats his body like a machine. I think that um, again, he's gonna be somebody that we're gonna watch for a lot of years, and and he's gonna he's gonna give us some some great basketball. Okay. Okay. And last but not least, Kevin Durant. KD is a. Uh, He's a cheat code, man. <laughs> yep. He's a uh, KD. Yeah, KD is a cheat code, man. I mean, he's he's seven feet. He got a handle. He can shoot it. Uh, he defends. He he can pass. He's just a cheat code, man. It's just like it's when KD shoots. It's almost like you shooting a sock in the hamper. Like that's how that's how KD wow. played play basketball. It looked like he just throwing a pair of socks in the hamper, man. You know it's. You can't guard him. Like he's he's probably the most unguardable player that we have ever seen, honestly. Man. Aside man. aside from obviously number twenty three, Michael Jordan. All right, all right. So you got Michael Jordan obviously as the goat. So there's no other player that comes close to Jordan, right? I don't. It's not even close. Okay, okay. We're gonna have another discussion about that one. I'm not gonna say LeBron, but I have another player that comes to mind. But Who's one that? player that will come. I would say Kareem. Why not? I can't argue that. I, I think Kareem Kareem dominated on every level of basketball from high school. There you go. You know what I mean? And it's uh you know, I he's from New York, went played high school in Harlem. Like I, I know the history. Uh you know, he's I just think that um I think that what Mike was able to do, you know culturally coming in. You know, it's just, it, it, we just had never seen a player move like that. You know what I mean? We never seen a player move like And, you know, I tell people all the time, when you look at the, the teams that Mike won with, he didn't have much. You know, people love to scream, oh, he had Dennis Rodman. You know, I don't know if people know, Dennis Rodman was only all-star twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I, I get it. I love Dennis Rodman. He's one of the greatest, you know, rebounders and defensive specialists in the game, but you know, you know, you look at a lot of these other players now and a lot of these teammates that these other players, these great players have, and they have some players that were better than Dennis Rodman. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I like your point. And also, I agree with you about Michael Jordan. Just the culture impact, his impact beyond basketball is insane. Nobody's going to ever come close to that, no matter and what. And just what he – and what he – he had a dynasty with no – like dominant big man. Name another dynasty without a dominant big man. I can't think of none. You got a point there. He sort of beat the myth that you can win with a guard. Like, yeah. yeah. That's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Well, I agree with you. All right, so obviously being a Lakers fan, 
unfortunately, mm-hmm. we did lose Kobe Bryant. And I just yeah, want to know from you, being, the world, the world has, yeah, man, in some weird way, the world hasn't been the same since we lost Kobe. I don't know if people really re- realize that. Oh no, man! As a guy who covers the game, like I go to games, it was it was an eerie feeling, not happen. But what did Kobe yeah. Bryant mean to you? Kobe was Kobe was, you know, Kobe was my guy, man. That was you know because Mike was older than me, and me and Kobe were more similar in age, close in age. Like when I was in high school, Kobe was in high school. He was, he's older yeah. than me by like two years, but he was the guy that you know I grew up with. That I was like, I felt like me and him were like homeboys. It was like, you know, he was in high school, he went straight to the league, and it's kind of like, yo, who's this young dude from Pennsylvania that's going crazy? You know what I mean? And he, he you just grew up like we grew up together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you went through all the motions, the stages with him. Um, again, because we were so similar, close in uh, close in age, so it was kind of like you was looking at your homeboy, and you was rooting for him, and he was dominating, and he was doing his thing. And then you watched him go from that to a father and a husband and you know and it's kind of like the, the the book the book was closed on that before we got to you know get to the end of it and it's kind of like i think that's what hurt the most where it was like we were just getting the after basketball thing and it was like so yeah. now we want to see that because like i said it looking at him in comparison it's like okay this is what Kobe is doing. So it's kind of like, okay, that's what I got to kind of get my mind up to start doing, like thinking business mind and, you know, trying to move like this and, and just do, and showing people that, you know, I dominated in this and I dedicated my life to this. So now I'm going to dedicate my life to my family and to get that cut so short. It's just heartbreaking, man. Yeah, man. And I agree with you. We grew up with the guy. It's almost right. like your, like your brother. And like, we were right. all supposed to grow old together. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, and we and it got cut short. So, man, obviously, you're you're in the music, you're involved with music. What do you think the climate of music will be in the next five years? Uh, the climate. You know, right now it's so weird because the world has changed so much, so it's kind of hard to gauge that right now. I don't know what type of emotions are going to come out of this. Um, so it's just hard to gauge it right now. Like I said, the world has changed so much. And usually music is a reflection of what's going on in the world and how the world is feeling. And so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of difficult because we don't know, you know, what's to come as a result of all of this uh, quarantine. And, you know, literally the world is changing so much every day. It's kind of hard to gauge it. I think the, the beautiful thing is I, I see people tapping into their creativity more. Like I see yeah. people are not relying so much on just having a nine to five that they wake up and go to. Like people are trying to figure out things they can do from home. People are trying to build their own businesses. People are trying to create these avenues of income to where they can sustain things like this where the entire world has to shut down for a period of time. But, you know, even through the quarantine, we were able to get a lot of creative things going on on social media, a lot of podcasts, a lot of shows, a lot of, uh, you know, the versus thing on Instagram where artists come together and just display their catalogs for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, 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 with D nice was able to do DJ and quarantine DJ and have over, you know, 800,000 people just watching, playing, you know, records. It was like, you know, to see things like that, it, it, it just shows that we are, we, we're resilient people, man. Like humans are resilient. We're able to adapt. We're able to, you know, figure it out. And, you know, I just think with the sound and landscape of music, it's just going to, right now, it's just hard to tell because, like I said, you don't, you just don't know, people don't know what to feel because we're not really around each other as much as we used to be. We don't know. Like, I don't even know what people want to hear anymore. Like, you can't go to the club and see what people, what move people. You can't yeah. be out in, you know, the park and, you know, cookouts and stuff like that and just see what people are moving to. You can't have these festivals to see what type of sound people are, 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 are adapting to or pushing or, you know, so it's, it's just kind of weird. Like it's, I don't, it's hard to answer what the landscape will look like. like we'll probably need another year and a half, two years to kind of see that. So what advice would you give someone that's trying to get into the industry right now with everything that's going on? Uh, Definitely, you know, find a way to tap into, you know, things digitally. You know, you got to utilize these these streaming platforms. You got the thing I love about the, the the industry now is 
the way that we receive music, the way that we yes. get music. It's like, I love it. I love the fact that I can literally be texting you and think about a record or think about an old song that I like and literally just type it in my phone and I can get it immediately. You know what I mean? It's accessibility. Mm -hmm. It's um, whatever you do, make it, make sure it's access accessible. Make sure people can get right to it. Make sure that people understand it and they get it as soon as they, because people are not going to come back for a second or third time. They want to get it on the first listen. They want to get it on the first go round. And if they don't, they might not come back. That's dope. That's dope. That's some good advice. So obviously on the JBP, the crew does joke around. They talk about mall records. I'm pretty sure you already know where I'm going with this. Yeah. Um, do you keep your ears in, in music in the streets? You know, you keep your music, your ears in the music and streets. So have you ever thought about starting your own imprint with that? Uh, I've thought about it, but I, um, I just don't, I don't think that, um, you know, because I have so many things that I want to get into and I want to do, and I don't think that, you know, I, I wouldn't want to have somebody rely and depend on me because there's so many other things that I want to get into and I want to do right now. So I don't, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to put their career in my hands and I don't treat it like, you know, this is all. Or, or nothing because I can't give it that energy right now because there's, there's, there's other things that I want to do, there's other things that I want to get into. So I've thought about it though. I mean, I, I still, in some capacity, I help people. I, you know, people call me for advice. I'm, I'll connect them to somebody that I think could help them. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it may not be me doing it, but it's like, okay, that's what you want to do. Like, I got somebody that I could tap you in with. Hmm, dope, dope. So what you listen to right now, man? Like, I know you listen to everything, but what do you listen to right now? Like, what's on the repeat? Oh, uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of old stuff, man. I've been listening to, like, a, a lot of old Beanie Siegel. I've been listening to, uh, I'm still listening to Summer Walker. I love Summer Walker. Um, yeah. yeah. Griselda, the whole Griselda camp. Uh, I like Sorry the Kid. Uh, I like his last project. It's probably one of my favorite projects of the year so far. I've been uh, spinning that a lot. I do a lot of, um, I'm a shuffle guy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like, I put my phone on, on shuffle and, and whatever happens, happens, man. Like, that's where I've been at lately. Like I said, because, you know, it's kind of like your mood is kind of like day to day changes. You know what I mean? So that's how I listen to music. I like, I like to listen to new music when I'm, uh, when I'm traveling, I think that's the best time for me to listen to new music is when I'm traveling because that's when I'm like just listening to kind of find something as opposed to like when I'm trying to set a vibe, I know what my vibe is or where my go-to is already. So I go right to it. So with the Griselda, you know, one thing I will say is this, you're sort of one of the first people that got people to really want to listen to Griselda. You know, shout out to West Side, mm -hmm. um, Benny and Conway and those guys, but you got people to listen to those guys can you talk about their music and what they're pushing right now um it just represents uh kind of the, the the element and the vibe of hip-hop that i grew up on you know with the content of the you know the street lyrics and what's going on in the environment so that to me i think was what what made me fall in love with what they were doing and they just moved like they didn't need nobody and i i love that i love when people move like they're not dependent on anybody. Like they're gonna do what they want to do. They're gonna look how they want to look, sound how they want to sound, and we're not gonna conform to what the industry thinks that we should look or sound like. Like this is who we are, and this is what it is. Take it or leave it. Like, and I just love that attitude. Cool, cool. Like that, like that. All right, so now we're gonna have some fun here. This is called Got Bars. This is the okay. this is a lyric trivia game, and this is the hip hop version. So we're gonna have some. And these are more opinionated answers. And I need you to give me some good answers on these, obviously. And there's going to be right. three questions. All right. So first one, what is the first album that you ever purchased? The first album I ever purchased with my own money? Yeah. It was either Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, or Midnight Marauders, Trap Tri Called Quest. I can't remember That's which one it was. That it might have been Trap Called Quest. It might have been Trap Called Quest. That yeah. is two classic albums, by the way. Yeah, very good albums. All right. Who is the current king of hip hop? 
the current king of hip hop uh, would be Jay Z. One time for home. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I like that. Well, speaking of home, I need you to tell me your three favorite albums from his discography. Uh, Reasonable Doubt. Uh, Blueprint and hmm. Let's see. Right, Let's see. Album. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, okay. I was black gonna say. Let me, let me, I was gonna say. I have to pull this out for you, man. I was gonna yeah, say. We gotta make sure. sure. We gotta make sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, black black album. Album. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. So. Is there, would you, do you have an album of his that you think that is like underrated that a lot of people wouldn't say is one of his best, but you think it's pretty good? Uh, underrated? I think volume one was underrated. Hmm. I think In My Lifetime was underrated. Uh, I think In My Lifetime and Blueprint 2. I think, I think people didn't like Blueprint 2 because it was too many records. Yeah, double disc. I, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, but if you condense that all to, songs from both disc and make it one i think that people would appreciate it more i hate the the sean paul record though i that's <laughs> I, I i hate it and, and, and that's jay is my that's my big brother i would tell him that to his face i i just don't know where he was going with that vibe i, didn't, I just didn't get it yeah and my opinion that's one of my like i don't like kingdom come i don't know why i just don't like kingdom come and i'm pretty sure you okay. hear a lot and I don't know what yeah. it is about Keith Come Out. I just didn't like it. Like, I don't know why, but I feel like Jay has a flawless discography to me personally. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. man, man, that's dope, man. So I appreciate you coming on. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find you at? Uh, Twitter, M-A-L, three underscores. Uh, Instagram, M-A-L, underscore, by the way. And you can check us out on the Joe Button Podcast on Spotify and on YouTube. All right, man. Once again, I appreciate you coming on, giving me your time. Um, I know we got that documentary, I believe, that's coming up on that Master P documentary and DMX documentary, No Limit. Thing. I know you're ready for that, yeah. right? Absolutely. All right. I can't wait to see that. Whew. All right. Before we get out of here, you got any last words? Um, everybody stay healthy, stay blessed, be safe, man. Uh, check up on your, your, your people. Uh, it's, it's more important now than, than ever to really check up on your people and keep in touch with the people you love and you care about. Um, yeah, man, and just appreciate life more. Let's 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 love each other. Let's support each other. Let's uh, check on each other. And um, yeah, man, just enjoy life, man. Be safe. All right, everybody, be sure to follow my man. Follow his journey. Follow what he's doing. He is making waves in our culture. Once again, I salute appreciate you. that. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, and we out.